Okay, James PFP here. I got another question from Janet, which involves using Audacity, and I'm going to try doing this video uh, in one take and without like ruining anything, <laughs> without causing a crash. So she asked a specific question in the last video that I released that was using Audacity to, uh, what was it again? Oh yeah, to check a voice print against two different people, Let's see whether or not they were the same voice. And then she asked another question about using uh, or like whether or not it was possible to clean up a piece of audio to tell better what people were saying in it. She used um, the four, not the four fish, the grassy knoll clip as the uh, as the thing to be cleaned up. I had a look at it and I think that it can actually be done. I'm going to show how it's done using the proper screen capture so you can see all the different tools that I'm using and when. Uh, let me play this. I'm going to try to remember where I start this selection. I need to know this. 36.781, okay? 36.781. Rewind. We'll just play from the section I'm using. Who are we threatening? They just blow us down, man. We need ambulances. They need to be rushed to the hospital. People are dying. This is the audio in question. And this is the first section she wants to hear. Harlan drove away with no front bumper. We saw it get changed. So that entire section's right here. Towards the end of the block on the right, first one. Towards the end of the block. So. We don't need to, need to listen any farther than that. I remember that the place that I wanted to take a clip for um, purposes of trying to remove some of the like the environmental noise which is present in this clip is right here. So I'm going to copy it to make sure that it's like in memory. I'll go to noise reduction. You now see this pop up. I get noise pro profile from that little tiny section. Select the whole thing just by clicking here and it selects it all and then effect noise reduction here's the settings I'm using 17 for the decibel levels that the sample will be reduced by but that's across the, the whole thing sensitivity is at 14 which is higher than I was doing it with Ford, Ford Fisher's one and then frequency smoothing bands the higher you do that the less artifacting you'll hear in the t in the actual sound. We just listen to the preview for a second. There's a little bit of artifacting there. So I'm gonna give this a try. We'll notice that there is like a, a difference in this audio from before and after. Uh, the overall volume level has been decreased and everything in the background and if I switch right now oops I did that wrong control Z if I switch here to waveform DB I see the D like a waveform for the area and I think this is what we're looking for oh no it's after this maybe about here no that's where he says I think so it must be here Trouble. Yeah, right here. Before I get much further though, I'm going to undo the noise reduction. It go, pops back to here. Let me go to waveform again. Harlan drove away with no front bumper. We saw it get changed. So you can hear it without the noise reduction. Now if I select it all and run noise reduction again. That's what noise reduction does. It makes the background noises drop down in volume level. It makes the stuff that's in the foreground pop up out of the background a little more than it did. But then it raises the overall volume levels down quite a bit from what, what they had been. Let me undo it and show you again. So the peaking right here is at like 15 decibels. But after we run the noise reduction, it's dropped to about 20 decibels, which is more than half quieter. But, there's ways that we can now raise the volume level of this short section. 
we, we can do it for the whole thing too if you really want to but we're only interested in one little area so I also draw your attention though before we get much further there's things that you can see in a spectrogram which are really cool like for example the sirens this straight line here is one of the sirens Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's here. Look. So you can see a lot of, of detail about what specific tones are, what patterns of, or what frequency ranges they're in, and what not. Simply by using noise reduction, it causes that stuff to pop back out. However, if I want to raise this overall volume level, there's two strategies, two broad strategies I could use to make it all louder. One way would be to use what's called a compressor. It's probably better to look at the entire thing as a waveform for a second to see what how a compressor does what it does. I'll run a compressor first just to show. Here's how a compressor effect looks. I have a threshold of decibels to consider. Anything above the threshold is, is lowered. And then there's a noise floor, which I've specified as at ne negative 50 decibels, which as you see here on the graph is well above anything on the graph. So I could pick a noise floor which is even lower than that. Like I could call anything below 40, say, as being like the noise floor I'm not interested in. The ratio determines how much the compression either reduces the top peak or increases the bottom. If I run the compressor here, you see what happens. It brings everything back up to the level it was before we did the noise reduction pretty much it brings it back to a similar decibel level however because I'm because I'm using a compressor there's a chance that the stuff which is down here will get brought up a little too much again and what I'm really interested in is these peaks so there's a better strategy I think to make the volume level better for the entire clip and that is to use a different effect it's called normalization you pick a volume level to bring it all up to but then it keeps everything in proper like scaling to each other so the peaks the peaks stay a farther distance between here and wherever the noise floor is so it's easier to pick things out the car that drove away with no front bumper we saw it get pardon me the car that drove away with no front bumper there's a car that drove away with no front bumper not harlan the car that drove away with no front bumper we saw it get <laughs> And I know that the second thing we're listening for is right about here, right? Maybe a little bit later. It's understandable, I think I heard. I'm not entirely sure. We can run normalization again on just that short section. And make all of it again a little bit louder. Let me actually change the selection boundary and repeat normalization away with no front bumper we saw it get sorry the car that drove away with no front bumper we saw it get <laughs> so it's understandable i guess kind of what i hear there i don't know about you so that's the first part of the like the answer to janet i think is is possible and you can see there where i've normalize these areas like um, if I zoom to selection can't remember whether it is fit to selection you can see where I normalized this area separately so the overall volume level increases on it now what I was thinking about was the second there's a second issue here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this little piece of audio uh, give it a special name. From GK. And I'm going to call it an AUG file. And keep it at high quality and save. Not going to bother with the metadata. Oh, 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 oh. I remember something else too. I probably should do this before we go much further. I'll do this before I get to the next part. 
an in-between part. Something else I did to the Ford Fisher audio, but I didn't cover in the last video, or the very first video I released on his um, like noise reduction in that video in particular. There's a way to get rid of extra environmental noise on this on this recording as well. I'll show you how it's done. Um, one thing I'm going to do here to make this a little bit easier is to limit the display of what frequency ranges I want to see on the side here. So we'll just spread that out a tiny little bit. And I'm going to view fit in window so that it's everything is visible. Another broad strategy I can use to reduce some of the frequencies which involve, since I know human voices are limited in range, well, they're limited to some degree. Like they don't appear below a certain frequency range, like maybe 100 hertz. And they generally only have harmonics or like um, vocal effects from how vocal cords interact with one another above a certain frequency range. And then they, they cut off well below where the like top end is here. So I can do what's called a high pass or a low pass as an effect to get rid of some of the sound I don't need to hear. In this case, I don't think it's going to do much. But in Ford's case, it actually improved audio quite a bit because the helicopter going overhead introduces a lot of high end and a lot of low end sound in terms of the frequencies. So I'll show you the how the filters work. We'll do a high pass frequency first. High pass filter. I pick a frequency to start the filter at and then there's a roll off decibels per uh, octave. The higher you set that generally the more data above the limit is preserved but it pays attention to what the volume level is to figure out what to preserve and what to get rid of. So we need to have a higher cutoff for this one, for the high pass. Actually, the high pass frequency, you pick the low end here. Watch. We do a high pass frequency, and, and everything in the low end that I don't need to see gets wiped out. That's what it is. And if I then follow with a low pass, it's, this, it's in the opposite direction. Uh, low pass filter. Set it say 4,000. And you can see how data above the filter's cutoff isn't wiped out, but it is made less noisy. So we can listen to this again for just a section. The car that drove away with no front bumper was all contained. That was the oh, and if anything, when I did that just then, I'd say the high pass filter didn't help it. I'd say the high pass filter should probably be set lower. So let's try that again. Oh, I need this one. Let's do a high pass starting at 110. Oops, 110, not 1,000. So it's very hardly visible here in this recording since I've already cut off that re range of frequencies here. And now we're going to do that low pass. And I'm going to set that higher. And we'll listen to the clip again. The car that drove away with no front bumper was all contained. <laughs> Towards the end of the block on the right, first one. Strikes me too, there's another strategy we could do is to try to get rid of uh, the person who's yelling here. Are anybody hurt? Anybody hurt? We could try to remove this just out of sheer curiosity, see whether or not this can do anything. Uh, noise reduction, get the profile, select it all. We'll see what happens though. I, I don't have a good feeling about this one. I could have just done it in this one little section too and probably got a better result. Maybe. The car that drove away with no front bumper was all contained. Because it's specifically trying to get rid of that person saying anybody hurt, anybody hurt. It still has it there, but it's reduced the volume of it so much that it's in the background again. So it's possible to target specific frequencies, but because human voices share frequencies, they're a little more, a little less from one point to another. 
So maybe that answers your question technically just from the audio point of view, Janet. I'm going to show you something else though while I've got the software all running nicely here. I think everything is working good. I don't need to save this. Uh, here we go. Whoa, freaky effect. Let's try this one. Grassy Knoll Processing. This is the video file that I'm using for Grassy Knoll. I just sort of do that again. I'm making sure that everything is working well. The moment in question is somewhere off around here. And I don't need to see many of these videos. Don't need to see that one. Oh, I do need to see Grassy Knoll. What am I saying? Grassy Knoll is the one in question, isn't it? Well, I'll do it another way. That one, I uh, don't need to see these. And I believe this is Grassy Knoll. And what audio do I want? I want Grassy Knoll's audio, not this one and not that one. So I have to find the moment in question here now, but I, I didn't. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, got it. We need ambulances. Okay, sure, we need ambulances. Now to make this easy. I'm going to make sure I select everything that I don't want immediately interfering in this uh, next process and move it up a framer or move it up a, a layer or two here. I want to be able to put that audio clip I just made here a second ago into the, fo into the file and uh, synchronize them. I'll show you how I've been doing that in Blender is the whole reason what I'm doing here. There it is, grab Y, grab Y. I also could be turning on screencast keys here, but I'm sorry to not tell you exactly how to do everything. I'm pressing the G key to get to grab, and then I'm pressing Y to limit it to the Y axis. And over on the side of the window here, if I draw the waveform, I now get to see these two pieces of audio, which are around about the same moment in time, but you can see how the waveforms will coincide, hey? That peak and this peak are the same. Let's just back them up and you'll see how. See how they start to coincide with one another? And the more I zoom in, of course, the more exactly I can line them up. So for this little section of video, Let's uh, right now page up, Ooh, wrong one. Page down. This little section of audio, I'm going to do a. I'll do a little video clip, and then we'll play the video clip at, after it renders, so you can see everything. <laughs> uh, that one, and that one needs a keyframe. If I go forward and I'll make this keyframe zero now. So what I'm trying to do is to replace audio from one source to the other. Who are we threatening? We need Hmm. That didn't seem to take zero and keyframe. This should. Who are we threatening? They can blow us down, man. We need ambulances. We don't need help. They need to be rushed to the hospital. People are dying. Oh, 
car that drove away with no front bumper. We saw it. Okay. So we only really need this piece of video. Uh, this will be the start frame. That'll be the end frame. I'll give this a specific name so I can quickly find it when I've got it run. Uh, this is Grassy Knoll Audio Fix. Audio is enabled for the render. This will take practically no time at all to render. Here's what it looks like as it's rendering. Here's the readout telling me how long it's going to take to render it. Because there's very few effects being applied here. Practically none. And now that that's done rendering, I'll I'll save this for now. I've been saving everything to this file. I'll pop open the render we just did. The car that drove away with no front bumper. We saw it change. Try that again. Car that drove away with no front bumper. We saw it change. Try one more time. I don't know if we can hear anything being said to the woman in pain. In fact, I'm... So, now... car that drove away with no front bumper. That's definitely there's a car that drove away with no front bumper. That drove away with no front bumper. We saw it so, here's the last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I don't know if I have a very good example other than my phone and, say, a recorder. Hmm, let me see. The phone is probably the best example. Here's the microphone on my phone. Here, uh, this is not the best example. We'll work on it. We'll make it clearer. Blender's in this window anyhow. And I could put the video on this window. Ooh, let me make this smaller. And I'm gonna be really cool with my video camera for a second and turn off some of this crap I got going on in the picture. I still have a green screen. If you look at the bottom of my camera here, see the microphone? That little dot? That's called a condenser microphone. These things are, they're very useful because when you're pointing it at something, it captures practically 180 degrees. But when something is past the microphone, if, if I'm on this side of that little hole, and I try talking, it's a lot less loud. It catches more of my voice sound from the echo of the wall beyond than it does directly because of the angles of that little hole. It's like a pinhole camera, in a sense, but for sound waves. Um, a microphone like you'd find on a, on a high quality, not consumer, well, some consumer grade cameras and most professional grade cameras have got a microphone which is mounted on the front with maybe a wind sock on it. That's a proper omnidirectional microphone which captures sound from all directions. So if he, if Grassy Knoll had been using a really high quality microphone in a separate unit to the, a little condenser microphone in, a, in his camera, say, he would have been able to hear better audio for what's going on. But I think that what you thought was him talking to the lady in pink is in fact someone else entirely talking to her, like practically next to her. Or I should put that another way. It's someone else talking in this area, if you know what I mean. 
Let me turn on the uh, effects on the camera again. Or turn the camera off, maybe. Maybe even be, may even be better for this little piece. It's one of these people talking that I think you thought was him talking here. Or that you can see that they're, they're going to talk. Oh, but I can't see what else, uh, or I can't get any better out of that audio than that, I think. So, Janet, thanks again for the questions. I hope that answers everything. And uh, if you like what you see, please remember to share and subscribe to the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.